How's it going everyone? It's Abdallah here bringing you guys another awesome Mario Kart Tour tips and tricks tutorial video. This video is all about the best control schemes within the game. I know a lot of you guys are brand new to this method of moving on your game on your mobile device versus using a Nintendo Switch Pro controller or whatever. So now a lot of you guys are curious like is what's the best way of playing? So we're gonna go through the different ways of playing the game and of course you guys can subjectively find out what you enjoy the most. While we're doing it, I'm gonna give you guys some more tips and tricks while we're playing some races because I've seen a lot of comments on my videos asking about how do I drift so well? How do you do the ultra mini turbos? What's the best control scheme? So that's the reason why I'm making this video for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you guys that are on board and enjoying the Mario Kart Tour videos that I'm doing. Make sure you guys are subscribed. It's absolutely free to play to do. And of course, you guys can click on the links in the description below in order to watch the full on playlist where there's tons of other tips and tricks tutorials. All right, so as you guys can see, we're over here in the settings part of the menu. Uh, once you're at this main screen over this way, in the bottom right corner, there's the settings button. So we're going to click on that. And you can see that it says control method right over here. Now, in this area, there's four things to check that you can potentially put on. You can put manual drift on, you can put smart steering, auto item, and you can do gyro. You can go tic-tac-toe all the way in a row. But, of course, we're going to actually show you what you guys should do as far as the best control schemes, in my opinion. You guys can agree with me in the comments or tell me what you guys enjoy. So, for starters, the thing that I want to make sure that you guys are all aware of is auto item. And it's not necessarily a control movement, but it's more of a, as soon as you use, or sorry, as soon as you go through item blocks, if you have auto item on, your character is going to automatically use everything that they have on them which may not be good for strategic plays. If you know that there is someone behind you with a red shell, you don't necessarily want to ditch your green shell in order to block it, in order to get new items. You want to have full control over what kind of items you're going to reroll for. So I highly suggest taking auto item off. Now, smart steering, on the other hand, is another thing that I would suggest turning off. What smart steering does is it pretty much negates you from going into any off-road shortcuts if you're not intending to do so with a mushroom or a frenzy or a giant shroom or anything like that. So if you have it on, you're going to be steered back onto the road without going off-road. So you definitely want to turn that off. Now, that just leaves two out of the four options, manual drift and gyro handling. Now, there's going to be a couple different schools of thought on this one. So we're going to go over different ways of going on to regular drift versus manual drift. And I'll show you guys some examples of what that looks like. So let's get out of here. As you guys can see over here, we turned all of the things off. We're going to go into Toad Cup over here. We'll do 666 Demon Toad. And I'll show you guys exactly what I do with my finger as I'm uh, driving around. Now, what I like to do is I like to hold my uh, phone with two hands and I like to do my most dominant thumb with moving left and right for drifting. And I use, I use my non-dominant thumb for using items. So that, that way you can, if you get a frenzy, you can keep a drift and you can keep on going like that. So right now I'm gonna just go one hand so that you guys can see exactly what we're doing over here. So this is non-manual drift, this is automatic mode. And in automatic mode, you're gonna see that there's an arrow on screen. And the only way that you can get a mini turbo is if you hold a turn. If you hold a turn, that arrow is going to turn into a mini turbo right over there. So this is decent for beginners, but you're not going to be able to do as much things as you want to, especially if you're trying to get the, um, the ultra mini turbo, which is not possible in this control scheme. And ultra mini turbo is the pink one, the pink sparks, so that you guys can absolutely get a lot more points for and a lot more boost with it. So you guys can see over here that it, it's it's easy to control for beginners, just moving left and right with your thumb over here. But if you're trying to be more advanced, that's exactly what you want. All right, so now within here, we're gonna show you guys the gyro handling. So gyro handling, um, now that we got a frenzy, is really just like left and right. If you wanna twist your phone in order to move, you can do that. So you can see over here, I'm just like, all right, this is cool, this is beginner. This is fine, you can have a little bit of fun with it, but if you wanna make your game into the next uh, into the next level and get good at it, using gyro along with this is not necessarily the way to do it because you're missing out on the potential of doing tighter turns and of course doing the ultra mini turbos. So anyway, we're gonna quit out of that and I'm gonna show you guys another example. All right, so that's one way of doing it. We showed you guys a little bit of gyro, a little bit of automatic, but the real jam is going to be 
turning on manual drift, okay? So this is where a lot of the pro players, pro players in quotes, right? A lot of the people that are getting better at the game will be leaning towards manual drift. For one, you have full control over your character and you can indeed use ultra mini turbos. So let's do that really quick and I'll show you guys that this is my preferred way of playing the game. Now, some people's phones don't have gyro sensors in them, so they can't necessarily use gyro. So keep that in mind. If gyro is not an option for you, that's probably why. We'll go over here to Toad and I'll show you what's going on. So, like I showed you guys earlier, I'm going to use two hands for this one. This is how I do it. You guys can do it however you want, but I, I like the two hand version because my phone can handle the two inputs. And of course we can play like this, so. Anyway, uh, I'll show you guys what manual is all about while we're doing this. This is hand cam, by the way. Some people asked for it, which is weird, but okay. Anyway, so with this, you can drag and then you can stretch out a mini turbo in order to get even more uh, stretch on it. So you have full control over how wide you want your mini turbo to be and how narrow you want it to be. And you can see these pink sparks over here. It's an ultra mini turbo and it looks like Toad gets 70 points off of it. So when I have items, I usually press my, my other thumb over here in order to kind of drop them and use them accordingly. But what you really want to get used to is learning how to drift manually like this and you can stretch it out in order to get coins or you can make it even tighter to make tighter turns and guarantee you get first place. So anyway, that's what I like. And then you can hold drifts super long and then stretch them like this in order to keep on combos. So there's some coins over here. I'm holding on to a drift while doing that. Here's an ultra mini turbo. I'm gonna keep that going until I get these two coins, let her rip, and then continue on that way. And then of course you guys can use these boosts however you want to and then go from there. So that's pretty much how I like to play. Uh, this is kind of like awkward just playing this. So I'm gonna boost over here, hold on to a drift, and then we're gonna keep on going. And then I could potentially get a, a frenzy over here. I didn't, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then uh, drifting over here, I can stretch it for like a, a yellow one. Maybe I can stretch it for a purple one for 70 points at the line, and you can. So there we go. So having those controls where right at the line you can stretch it a little bit more and then cut it, uh, for the Ultra Mini Turbo, that's 70 points towards your high score. And as you guys know, in Mario Kart Tour, it's all about your scores. So keep that in mind. Now, the hard part about doing manual without gyro is the fact that if you want to stay straight or make subtle turns, it's going to be relatively hard for you to do. Uh, case in point in Rock Rock Mountain, this level, you need like a little bit of a little bit more experience of like subtle turns. And I'll jump into this cart to show you guys uh, what the second thing could be. So the reason why a lot of people don't like manual without gyro is because if you're trying to like do a slight turn, like an ever so slight turn to align yourself, it's really hard to do because you have to hop and drag. So that, I'll show you this right off the bat. Like if you want to stay straight, I'll not get this. If you want to stay straight, if you want to do like a subtle turn, you have to like hop and drag to the left or hop and drag to the right in order to get that subtle turn. But the more you play this game, the more uh, you'll absolutely understand exactly how to do this. So this is what I was talking about, playing with two hands. So if you get a frenzy, you can use one finger to do your drifts, which is getting more points, and then the other finger to tap on the frenzies um, all the way. So again, this is going to be a slight drag to the left and to the right for alignment. If you want to move, you can see like the, you can see me dragging right over here. And of course, we've got this stuff. So if you want to throw items forward, you drag upwards. If you want to throw them backwards, you would uh, throw them back. So moving over here, doing a little shortcut while holding on to a mini turbo in order to get that. And you can go from here. So this is the part where it's like, all right, well, you want like subtle little jumps in order to get every single one of these boosts. And sometimes I don't even make it because I don't have the subtle turns on it. But anyway, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to gyro handling and I'll show you guys what this is all about. So. It's the exact same thing, it's the same concept, but you can uh, you can kind of move a little bit and you can stretch even further. And then like, let's say you want it to stretch that way, you can do a little bit of a combo. I can't necessarily say if you're going to get tighter turns if you drag to the left or to the right and you lean at the same time, but I can see where people would like this gyro scheme simply because they can hold this upright and then slightly tilt to the left or to the right rather than accidentally clicking on an item and using it um, or something like that. So I can see where this can be the most optimal, but like me personally, I don't really like the small gyro and I'm just used to playing without tilt controls. Am I right? I'm using tilt controls. 
But anyway, yeah, it can be pretty good. It can totally be pretty good. Am I going to switch to this? Probably not. But you can see over here that I can do this without jumping or missing any of it, which is pretty good. Like, that's awesome. I, I honestly might try that. So arguably, that is probably the best control scheme if you have gyro enabled on your phones. So there we go, ladies and gents. That's my little example of how to play the game. It, I went over it rel relatively quickly. The real control scheme is up to you guys. Whether you use manual with gyro or manual alone, those are going to be your best bets in order to maximize your potential in this game. I would definitely say it's a learning curve for sure. The biggest complaint that a lot of people get other than the gacha mechanics is the control scheme for Mario Kart Tour. And there are times where I play with manual on and I accidentally, like if I'm trying to do a power side, I'll accidentally like use my shell. And then I get hit by a red shell because I misclicked it. So, I mean, there's a lot involved with it, but if you guys wanna be on top of your leaderboards and just be really, really good and make sure you guys get those 20 gems, the only way to do that is by playing in either manual with gyro or manual alone. You're not gonna be doing it with automatic at all. And the other things that I showed you guys before, which is auto item, you're never gonna to wanna to use that. And smart steering gives you more control over where you can kind of drift into in order to get even more um, advancements and placements. So hopefully that answers your question. Let me know in the comments which control method you guys use and let me know why. Are you on team manual drift with gyro? Are you on team manual drift without gyro? Does your phone not even have a sensor to allow you for gyro handling? Or are you brand new to the game and you're still on smart steering without, uh, without any of this? So looking forward to it. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to smash that like button, share the video with a friend, and make sure you guys are all subscribed. It's absolutely free to do so, and I'd love to have you guys on board. Stay tuned for even more Mario Kart Tour content. Take care.